Hey, gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and I'm here with Mitch Reed from No Dice, No Glory. How you doing, Mitch? What's going on, Liz? Well, I'm excited because we're here to introduce Joe Kelly. Uh, they are a Zenobia Award finalist and the designer of Molly House. How you doing, Joe? Hey, I'm good, thanks. How are you? I am doing great. So let's just start with the basics. Tell us about Molly House. Okay. Um, so Molly House is a game set in like 18th century London. Um, so there were um, these kind of secret meeting places um, that would normally be something like a, maybe a coffee house or like the back room of a pub or something like that. And um, they were places where queer people um, could, could meet up um, and kind of, you know, just live, live their lives um, kind of free from uh i guess the the oppressive outside world so um around kind of the end of the 17th century um there's this group called the society for the reformation of manners uh that pops up in london um and they are all about kind of enforcing all the moral laws um that aren't really being enforced at the time so things like um trading on Sundays, um, that's a big no-no. Um, and uh, they're against sex work, um, but they're also like one of the things they're against is, is sodomy. So there's, there's laws against sodomy um, at the time um, and the death penalty is um, enforced for that. So um, that's kind of what these people were, were up against. Um, and um, yeah, so the, the game kind of casts the players as mollies in a molly house. Um, and you're trying to put on um, festivities in the molly house. Um, so you're collecting stuff, you're putting on like drag balls, masquerades. Um, they had like christening festivities where, so a lot of mollies had their own kind of maiden names in the molly house that they would use. Um, so things like, uh, there was one called Dip Candle Mary. Um, there was one called Princess Serafina. Um, yeah, all these really kind of cool, colorful names um, that they kind of referred to each other with. And when they got their Molly name, um, they would have gin uh, kind of thrown in their face as a kind of christening ceremony. Um, so you're putting all of these events on, um, but also while you're doing that, uh, you're kind of creating a risk for yourself and for everyone else. Um, so there's kind of um, increasing numbers of constables that come out onto the board um, and you're kind of rolling dice, you're pushing your luck um, to see how much you can get away with. Um, and then there's kind of mechanisms for getting arrested and trials and the outcomes of those. Um, so that's the kind of broad overview of the game. I've had gin thrown in my face, but for totally different reasons. <laughs> So mechanically, what kind of game are we looking at here? Is this going to be like a Euro game or, I mean, we've got some dice rolling. So what's, a, what's our... Yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit Euro gamey. So it's uh, the kind of action selection thing is uh, a worker placement um, game uh, with there's kind of action cards and they get dealt out um, every two rounds. So you've got kind of different actions that come out. So things like putting on a festivity. Um, cruising is one of the things that you can do in the game as well. So that was one of the ways that people met each other um, at the time. So uh, there's kind of four different places you can go cruising and they, they might have different numbers of constables at them. Um, but you're just kind of taking turns to do, you can do a major action and a minor action. Um, and there's also this push your luck element. So the the more rounds you stay in, um, the kind of more likely you are to, to get um, arrested as well. So there's kind of all these ways you're kind of building up risk to, to kind of build up joy. Um, so kind of the, the main currency in the game, I guess, is joy. Uh, so you're putting on festivities to create joy. Um, and there's, there's a collective pool of joy. So when you put on festivities, you can put that in the collective pool to to kind of 
try and keep everyone in the Molly house happy, or you can kind of keep some of it for yourself and your personal joy. Um, and um, if there's not enough collective joy at the end of the game, then everyone's going to lose. Um, if you don't have enough personal joy at the end of the game, then you're going to lose. And um, you also build up um, esteem, which is another uh, kind of victory point kind of thing that, that serves as a tiebreaker at the end um, if more than one player manages to get all of that um, together. So my question is, tell us about the research process for this game, uh, especially going back to that history. Um, hmm. Not a lot of books are, are written about that. Um, how difficult was it for you to do all the research? Um, yeah, you're, you're right. There's, there's not that much out there. So um, there's kind of one, one major book, which is called Mother Claps Molly House um, by Richter Norton. Um, and there's another guy called Randolph Trambach, who's done a lot of research um, around Molly houses. Um, so as I've been reading them quite extensively. And um, Richter Norton also keeps um, an online database of um, kind of primary sources. So all of the source material is either uh, trial documents from the Old Bailey records mostly, um, and there's a few kind of clippings from newspapers around the time, um, which is a lot of kind of sensationalist articles about this kind of outrageous mollies and all the stuff that they're up to. Um, Not many and, first person accounts, I guess, from based um, on what it sounds like. Not many. So none, none by actual mollies themselves. Um, so you've got kind of journalists who are writing these kind of uh, tabloid pieces um, there's actually there's an account by a robber called um, I think his name is James Dalton um, who has written an account of his life um, in like 1728 or something um, and he writes an account of going to a molly house in there but yeah the, the mollies themselves they they were all uh, I think at least mostly they were um, working class people so they didn't really have like, they didn't really keep accounts of, of what they were doing. They, they weren't writing any of it down. So um, it's, it's, it's an interesting topic. There's lots of kind of having to try and fill in the gaps in, in this historical record. Um, so. Um, you actually said something interesting before mm. we move on. I wanted to ask, you know, you look at this period in England it's, and class was uh, mm -hmm. very evident in everyday life. So this was mostly a working class uh, phenomenon as opposed to where you would have uh, like-minded people congregate at the Molly houses from different strata of society. I guess that still did not happen. Um, yeah, I mean, potentially kind of, I think there's potential that all, like more upper-class people were visiting the molly houses but they definitely weren't like uh the everyday kind of members there um so a lot of the mollies were actually named after their profession so there's like orange deb was an orange seller um garter mary sold garters um so yeah there's 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 lots of kind of evidence of what jobs they were doing and they were not kind of they were not the aristocracy um mm. for sure so just out of curiosity, um, you know, we're talking about gatherings of, of queer people. Did that include people of uh, both men and women? Or is this still no women allowed? Um, <laughs> I mean, that's that's a tricky question, because I think there's definitely um, definitely trans women. Um, yeah. So Princess Serafina, for example, um, she's she's quite remarkable because um, she, there's kind of trial documents for her, but she's actually bringing a case against someone else who's tried to steal her clothes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there's this whole court case of her, like, uh, yeah, bringing, bringing case, a case against this guy who tried to steal her clothes. And then um, she brings in loads of character witnesses and they're all referring to her as Princess Serafina, not by her given name. And um, there's what one of her neighbors says, I 
I never knew she had another name other than Princess Serafina. They're all calling her she and like her majesty and all this, all this stuff. So I think there's a definite case that there were trans women, probably people that we would consider non-binary now. So mm -hmm. I, th I think um, even kind of the, the common ideas of, of what it meant to be queer, I guess the term at the time was they were kind of sodomite or molly. They were used interchangeably, but um, they were, uh, Randolph Trumbach kind of says they were uh, almost considered like a third gender. Um, so they have very different ideas, I think, to how, how we think about it now of, of uh, the classes of, of, of how gender and sexuality works. Um, a third so, gender, that's very progressive for England at that time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's an interesting idea because I I mean I don't think they mean it in the same way that we mean it now. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, I I think ideas ideas about sexuality at the time like there was no word for like there was no non pejorative word I guess, and uh, I think Molly was probably meant as an insult, especially initially. Like it was actually initially. Um, a word for a for a female prostitute which transferred over um to the mollies um so yeah it's 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 really interesting it's really difficult to talk about mollies kind of i guess using the language that we use now mm. that is so fascinating i guess the other question i had i really so you brought this up i'm really interested in it so you're talking about these kind of difficult i mean it sounds like you know, you're, we're talking about people who felt like maybe they didn't fit into society as it was. People who really don't get to tell their own story. They're showing up in court cases and have pejorative terms being used for them. But the currency in your game, the victory point uh, title is joy. And yeah. what, what inspired you to choose that? I think that that's a great idea. Where did it come from? Um. Well, I, so I, uh, my mentor in the Zenobia Award was Cole Worley. Um, so one of the first things that he talked to me about uh, was um, about kind of the idea of arguments and models in historical games. So um, my initial idea was that it was going to be kind of one player was playing the um, Society for the Reformation of Manners, the other player was playing the Molly House, and it would be this mm -hmm. kind of two player battle but then I kind of started thinking about what was actually interesting about the the history and um I was thinking about kind of uh I guess the risks people take and why they why they take them because I mean the death penalty is is there why do people go out cruising to meet each other when there's constables out who might kind of catch them and um the, uh, the reason is they didn't really have a choice. It was either that or just kind of not live their lives authentically, I suppose. So I kind of modeled it as you're doing these things to kind of create this joy, which you're either kind of creating for yourself or you're creating for the community. Um, and I, I guess I liked that idea of, um, I guess that's a model that also probably resonates with a lot of queer and trans people today of like, yeah, why do why do people why do people come out now? Um, mm. I mean, uh, things are a lot better, obviously, but there's still like there's still a lot of um, hate out there. There's a still a lot of, of oppression in the world, but um, yeah, people still come out because that's the better option, even if it's kind of got this inherent risk. So um, that's also why I went for a kind of push your luck uh, element to the game um, to kind of try and create that that idea of, of risk and, and reward had the molly houses been successful in changing um social norms back then would the game have then had a how you affected a society and politics as opposed to joy which i think is brilliant by the way <laughs> <laughs> um yeah yeah potentially um I think, I mean, there, there probably is uh, a game to be made about more recent UK history around uh, kind of LGBTQ rights um, 
And I know uh, Taylor Shuss is making a game about Stonewall at the moment, which mm -hmm. um, is really exciting. Um, I yeah, I mean, one. yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, I've, I've had a play of it. It's really good. Um, yeah. Um, but um, I think what's, what's interesting about this time is actually it's kind of, it's almost the start of like the, the modern oppression of queer people. Um, if you look at the records before like the kind of late 17th century, uh, you've had the, so the buggery laws of like 1533 have been in place for what two, nearly two centuries and only been used like a handful of times. Um, and then you get this, suddenly this society for the reformation of manners comes out and you get, uh, I think you get kind of tens of cases, um, maybe, maybe even more than that over this period of like, I don't know, 20, 30 years, um, so the, the kind of most famous um, case is Mother Claps Molly House. Um, so there were kind of undercover constables who were, um, came, in, came into the Molly House. Um, they were kind of collecting evidence and they had informers kind of among the Mollies as well um, mm. who were working with them. And um, they raided Mother Claps Molly House uh, they kind of arrested, I think, 20 or 30 people. Um, they didn't have cases against most of them, but uh, four of them got the death penalty um, and were, were hanged. And um, Mother Clap, who, who ran the Molly House, um, was found guilty of, of keeping a disorderly house. And uh, she was kind of put on the pillory. And I think she got really injured and nothing is heard of her wow. after that. So, um, yeah, it's almost the opposite of uh, this kind of queer liberation story. It's, um, I guess, the, the aim of the game is to avoid the raid happening and just try and keep things going and try and live as, as best you can. Yeah. So I love just the concept of a game about taking your joy where you find it because you deserve it, regardless of what anybody else says. And it also leads to the question of, uh, has the process of designing this game brought you joy? And <laughs> what part of, I, I think you've got a special soft spot for Princess Serafina, but what yeah. are there any other like very good tidbits that just really warmed your heart while you're doing this research? <laughs> um, I Yeah, I mean, this, this process has definitely brought me joy and it's definitely, been incredibly difficult as well um <laughs> just <laughs> uh this is the first game I've, I've um designed and uh it's really been kind of quite a grueling experience but i'm really glad i did it and i'm i'm really happy with with kind of where it's got to um i guess there's there's the story of how how mother claps um molly house kind of came to be invaded so basically there was this falling out between this couple um Mark Partridge and William Harrington um, were clearly lovers at some point. And then Mark Partridge, for some reason, felt betrayed by um, William Harrington and was going off, like, kind of spouting about it to whoever would listen at, uh, at pubs. And, um, and a constable happened to overhear um, him talking about it. And... Um, Basically, he kind of offered himself up to uh, to become an informer, and um, he, inf I think, he informed against about twenty people. Um, and uh, yeah, he's 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 a piece of work. But um, they never found uh, William Harrington, so he he got away. He got out of it. <laughs> How many people from the Molly House were put to death? Um, so it's well. It's 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 an interesting question because um, it was actually relatively difficult to charge someone with like sodomy proper. Um, so you had to have um, you had Witnesses. to have some yeah you had to have either yeah a first hand witness or medical evidence. I'm sure you can guess what that might be. Yeah. Um, and. Um, so a lot of people were charged with um, 
assault with the intent to commit uh, sodomy, um, which would get you a prison sentence and then uh, pillory. Um, but even, even those people, I guess, because a lot of people died on the pillory, unfortunately, at the time, um, they were kind of really badly pelted and um, people died in prison as well. There was jail fever going around um, and, I, well, I don't know, any, any kind of violence could happen to you in there as well, I guess. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, in, in the records, I did, I did have a look through kind of just the 1720s, I think. Um, I think maybe about 20 people died o- over that, over that time. Um, mm. uh, with most of them being kind of the latter half of, uh, of that period. So sort of back to the Zenobia process, mm. what inspired you to take part and you know this you said this is your first game what got you to make the leap into game design um so i i first heard about it on the weekly news on shut up and sit down so uh thanks to tom and ava for that um so i heard about it and then i kind of started thinking about if i were to make a game what it would be um and I looked up, I think, I think BGG has like a LGBTQ tag or something like that. And I looked up the games on that and um, it was honestly severely lacking in anything. Like even, I think there was one kind of proper board game, um, which is a Taiwanese board game. It's kind of like a, um, I think it's called Dare to Love. It's a fantasy game um, about kind of fighting oppression. Um, and all of the characters in it are LGBT uh, in, in some way. Um, aside from that, I think there's like a Cards Against Humanity style thing, but it's mm. queer. Um, <laughs> so I was like, well, there's got to be more, more game ideas out there. Um, so, yeah, I kind of started thinking about Molly Houses. I'd heard about them before, did some more research into them and uh, entered the awards. So, yeah. That's how I got into it. That's amazing. And I know the award has a grueling pace. I mean, it feels like it's been so long because it's been like a year, but that's not a very long time in terms of game design. No. Anything. <laughs> so well, all the other you... interviewers were saying, oh my God, it's so rough to do it in a year. And I have to agree with them. Yeah. So, <laughs> but um, do you feel like the process breakdown was helpful? Starting um, with proposal and then rules and then prototype. Yeah, I mean, um, definitely the, the proposal helped me to get all of my ideas kind of in in order, even if I kind of diverted away from them in the, in the end. Um, I guess the kind of rules part was slightly strange because I hadn't, <laughs> I didn't have a game at that point and I just kind of typed up some rules and I was like, oh, that'll do. Um, <laughs> but um Apart from that, yeah, it's, it's all been it's all been really good. It's all been really positive, and I mean, Cole's just been an, an amazing um, mentor. He's given me loads of his time. I know he's really busy, um, so that's been amazing. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't this this game wouldn't exist without the Zenobia Awards. So yeah, th- I mean, it's it's all been worth it for sure. So going forward. And it, this is a question I'm I'm really interested in is, you know, I'll, this game probably be very popular within the LGBTQ community. Are you hoping for a, a um, big response, positive response from outside the community? Because I think just how you're talking about the game, this is an amazing educational game. Um, mm. What are your thoughts on, you know, it kind of having a popularity outside of that community. I mean, I, I really, I really hope that it does. Yeah. If it gets picked up and published, I really hope that all kinds of people are going to play it and uh, learn about this history. Cause I, I think, I think it's really under, underrepresented. Um, and it's really interesting. It kind of shows, I think, um, I think it shows that I guess the history of 
the modern kind of queer movement goes back a lot further than I think a lot of people would expect. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I've, I've had good, I've had positive responses from non, I guess, non members of the LGBTQ community and who've said it's been really enlightening. So, I really hope it inspires people to go out and learn more about it. And um, I hope Your more fellow people... contestants really like the game and because we know you guys have been talking yeah and, yeah yeah um, <laughs> and so I, I i went out with a car last friday because i mm -hmm. he, you know i was his um mentor and uh i go so what games are you really excited about and then we've asked that in every podcast you're gonna get asked soon soon um and molly house always seems to come up and i just looked at it. it's one of the games i've judged for finals and i'm excited to to play it um because i just think the concept's awesome yeah, you know, you know, we've all been talking. We've all showed each other yeah. our games. Um, <laughs> they're all, they all sound amazing. I'm going to buy every single one of them. So, um, yeah, I'm so excited for all of the Zenobia finalists. All of the, to be honest, all of the concept proposals. I'll buy all of those too. I'm going to buy them all. Which leads us to the, one of the last questions Liz asked. Can I ask? This is your question. I, you know, we've been we've been switching off. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> basically, so you said that you like to enjoy all the games. Are there any particular ones that were very surprising, enlightening, mind bending for you to discover among the other finalists? I mean, yeah, they they all look incredible. But um, I guess I think the one that kind of maybe struck me from left field was. Um, winter rabbit um yeah yeah um so yeah i mean that game just the way the way it deals with and kind of thinks about history is uh really interesting kind of taking a more kind of folklore um uh attitude to it i suppose and um how that ties into the kind of the kind of cherokee um Cherokee, Cherokee way of, of thinking about history. I just think that's that's amazing. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to single it out because I think they all look amazing, and uh, <laughs> I'm just so excited about. Wow, that's games. like the most popular answer. They all look really good. <laughs> they do, though. I can I can verify so far. <laughs> so, um, just a softball question: uh, What games have you been enjoying lately yourself? Um. So I actually, uh, I played Regicide for the first time a couple of days ago. Um, so I've really been enjoying that. Um, yeah, just what they do with a regular deck of cards is, uh, is pretty incredible. Um, I've also recently played my first game of Maria, um, which, uh, yeah, kind of, kind of blew me away. Like, just the I guess well again it's it's a deck of cards isn't it um yeah the way it kind of deals with with combat with the with the kind of card play and the the different um squares with the different suits and I just I really I really enjoy that what game is on your shelf you'll never get rid of oh or I'm gonna you know. well I'll I'll say I'll say root it's it's there forever wow it's, it's it's just too pretty to, to get rid of that's fair that's very fair <laughs> all right so joe thank you so much for your time this has been awesome i'm personally super excited about this game uh where can people find you online if they have questions for you um well, i do i do have a twitter i don't use it very very much but uh so it's uh y-u-n-g-y-l-e-k is my uh is my handle excellent and um, as y'all know, you can find me anywhere as Beyond Solitaire. You can find Mitch on No Dice, No Glory. And it has been our absolute pleasure to talk to you, Joe Kelly, designer of Molly House. Oh, thanks for having me. No problem. Yeah, this happy, was awesome. Happy gaming, everybody.